in less than 10 hours from the moment of this recording, which is time on deck, 22, 1100 hours Central Daylight Time, 16 April, 23, world history may be made with a launch of the SpaceX Starship. This is the upper stage or model thereof, the upper stage of the SpaceX Starship. SpaceX Starship will be the most powerful booster ever launched if this works out successfully. SpaceX Starship total vehicle stands at 390 foot tall. The total thrust of the Starship is 16.7 million pounds of thrust. So far to date, the biggest booster ever launched was the Space Light Systems Artemis One mission uh, featured by this rocket, which was 8.8 million pounds of thrust. And prior to that, it was the Saturn V at 7.75 million pounds of thrust. The Saturn V took us to the moon and the uh, Artemis One flew around the moon with the intention of taking astronauts around the moon soon. But my friends, this launch is, is going to be one which may uh, have the entire future hanging in the balance. Why? Because we need this capability. The SpaceX Starship represents the first best hope. And maybe we don't have time for another best hope because of competition with China and just things coming up, guys. This may be our best hope. Why do I say that? This sounds crazy, right? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, space is the ultimate prep. Space is the place that we need to go to ensure the survival of our species. If nothing else, cosmic catastrophes have happened on Earth with enough frequency to do our planet out long before the sun certainly will do in planet Earth. We cannot exist forever on this planet. We must move out at some time. And if we had a major catastrophe, even just a major grid down, it sets our civilization back to the 1800s, the Stone Age or something like that. Guys, we've already mined all the easy to get to uh, copper and a lot of the resources. The stuff we're mining today is parts per thousand, maybe per million and some of the ores and all the easy to get to oil and petroleum that we used to start the civilization ain't so easily got to today. The one time you could take, stick a stick in the ground in Pennsylvania and that become bubbling crude. But now we're drilling miles deep offshore and everywhere else with a major infrastructure. If all this infrastructure is gone, there's no guarantee that we get back ever. So it may be that our very future existence hinges on the ability to reach space and to do so soon. And if it's going to be done by free society, this is the vehicle that's probably going to have to do it because China is planning to have a moon base by 2030. And I'm going to have to come out with a, a presentation in the not too distant future explaining why if they get there first, we may never get there. And in fact, they may dominate the world. China could really run the world from the moon. I will show that very soon, guys. So this launch is critical. Not only that, but it could blow up. This launch could be the, herald a new era, or it could be a nail in the coffin, guys. And some of you don't like hearing that, but I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So uh, pay attention. Tomorrow is going to be big. At 0800 hours Central Daylight Time, SpaceX is planning to launch the Starship from Boca Chica, what they call Starbase, <laughs> Star, Starbase, Texas. So this is imminent, guys. And I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to show you some stuff, guys. Let's look at this. Oh, I'm going to show you what they're showing. And I'm going to talk as we go. We're going to do a screen share. Bada bing, bada bang, hang on. And here we go. And that's not the screen I want to start off on. Yow. Hang on, guys. Right here. This is it. This is SpaceX telling us that they're going to be doing this launch to lower Earth orbit right here. But, and they're going to carry it live on their uh, channel here. But, guys, this is what it looks like, more or less. This is the upper stage on the launcher. Uh, this is critical because we are actually planning to use this to go to the moon. This is the representation of the lunar landing version of the Starship. Also, SpaceX is planning to, to put people on Mars in five years. Sounds a little optimistic to me. I don't, you know, Elon is big on short plans, but so I seriously doubt five years. But guys, that's the kind of thinking they're doing. I, I, I applaud the boldness in their thinking. But I got to tell you, this actual version may not work because, among others, uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> My good friend, uh, Mark Case from Mars, Bob Zubrin. You guys get brain locked. Forgive him. 63-year-old. Bob Zubrin 
believes that the thrust on this booster at three, uh, the regular Starship, you know, second stage, it's got 3.3 million pounds of thrust, far more than the lunar landers that we put on the moon. And the regolith on the moon is got a whole lot of dust in it. It's, it's a powder in many cases. He believes it's going to blast a crater out. And then when you land it, because it's top heavy, he thinks it'll just tip over. Boom. He don't think it'll be successful. He thinks that we need a smaller scale version of this to go up there at first or some other lander to put down a concrete pad to be able to land these guys on. But these guys are going to be crucial to our future. We need to have this work, have these things worked out. So um, I'm going to show you right here. Uh, this is the Starship. This uh, is a total picture of it right here on launch. That's an earlier artist view of it. That's not the version we have today. You can see there were a lot of tests. Guys, another thing that's really optimistic is that NASA had, uh, excuse me, uh, SpaceX had to fly several of these uh, upper stages to, to get one of them to stick. And here's another thing. They only fired the uh, first stage here. All the missions they got to do just to, to get one lunar lander. Guys, they only fired uh, the uh, super booster, the uh, main stage, the first stage of Starship, one time for, uh, well, they fired it twice, but the longest burns up like five seconds. I mean, full duration, five second burn. And so we're going to go from that to launch. It's not a lot of testing. And what I'm worried about is the thing blowing up. I did a video sometime back asking if, uh, SpaceX wouldn't nuke Boca Chica. Well, I hope not. But, you know, it was the, uh, the, several of these earlier test flights caused some problems in there. One did blow up in the sky and flung debris at some good distance out over the beaches. And that's why the uh, FAA has clamped down so hard. And they had a real hard time getting launch approval to, to do this launch, the launch license. It was tough for them. They had like 77 steps they had to jump through. And a lot of them were just like uh, helping the fishing community out. I mean, it was just all kind of stuff that really had nothing to do with a rocket launch. I did a video on that too and explain how I thought that was a little bit unfair. And here we are with the space launch system to show you the comparison of what was launched. So the guys, the space launch system was an amazing vehicle, but cost-wise, it's not going to let us uh, uh, develop space the way we're going to need to do it. It just costs too much to, to mount a campaign like uh, Elon Musk has in store or anything that's going to keep our species in survival mode. Now, here's what I worry about here. The Russian... N1 uh, booster on its second launch uh, attempt on the 3rd of July in uh, 1969, just before we launched to the moon, had a massive explosion. It was the largest artificial explosion, man-made artificial explosion, non-nuclear, to have ever occurred. It flung massive amounts of debris six miles from the pad, it, 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 it crashed back down on the pad. So it was not even, even up in the air. This is from ground level. It flung debris six miles. And it says so in this article somewhere, if you can find it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a very catastrophic explosion. Uh, I wish it was highlighted here, but that's what happened, guys. So I'm gonna find it in here. It's in this little article piece here. This is all in Wikipedia. You can look it up for yourself. This is on the N1 rocket. This is a picture of the N1 rocket itself. This is the Russian Soviet Union attempt to reach the moon. They never got these things to fly. Their biggest issue was really they had too many engines. <laughs> they didn't have as many engines as the Starship. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they tested it on the ground. It tested the final round, just couldn't. They couldn't ever get it to fly. So there is some risk, guys, in, in this uh, endeavor. So I'm gonna stop this right here. I'm gonna show you something. I'm going to show you why uh, you got to worry. If this thing were to blow up, it could cause huge problems. Well, if it blows up near the launch complex, if it blows up near shore, it could cause huge problems. Let's hope and pray that don't happen. And I am really hopeful tomorrow that at 6, excuse me, at 8 a.m., that we have a successful launch that tears it away. Now, Elon, away from shore, <laughs> Elon Musk says that he has about a 50% chance of uh survival or success of this mission. I think you may be optimistic considering the number of crashes that they had with the first stage. They finally nailed it on the very last attempt, but uh, they had to do several. So they may lose. Starship is ultimately far more complex than the uh, upper stage. This, they, this is also known as Starship. The whole thing, the super heavy is the name of the first stage. Super heavy. The super heavy is a, is a beast, man. It is a beast. It's 16.7 million pounds of thrust. The engines on it, 
uh, are nothing short of innovative. The Raptor 2 engines are the most uh, innovative engines that's probably ever been developed. This whole endeavor is very innovative. It is uh, uh, very bold, I might add. So I'm going to show you something else. We're going to screen share on Google Earth. I'm going to show you the, the dimensions of what we're talking about. I talked about uh, the wrist of Boca Chica. This is the launch complex down here. Boca Chica is back over here. So what you got to look at here, guys, and we'll, we'll go in, is Port Isabel. I'm worried about Port Isabel because Port Isabel actually is within the uh, six-mile distance of the launch complex. If you go from down here, the launch complex is actually, no, this is actually the start. This is their, this is uh, the SpaceX facility here. And the launch pad is right about here. So if you go from right about here over to, let's skip that dust. So the housing people live in this area right here. This is where people actually live. So we're going to skip over where a lot of people are working. And we look at the distance. That's six miles, guys, right there. Six miles. There's a trailer park for tourists, and I guess it's all right here. This trailer park is even closer, Council. Now, we're talking about something. This Starship booster has more than twice the fuel of the Russian N-1 rocket. Arguably, it could blow up much larger. That don't mean debris will fling 12 miles because the quantity distance, uh, all these things are volumetric. And when you're talking sphere, it's uh, within the inverse cube. Not, uh, not a, it's cubic, it's not uh, a linear distance, but still this, all this stuff is within range, guys. This is only 5.1 miles. So it's basically five miles to where people are camping out in large numbers here and six miles from where people live over here and uh, even closer to areas that people are working in. And eight o'clock, I imagine a lot of people be over here in this industrial area, which is, let's do another cancel and another screenshot. This is why this launch needs to get clear of all this area. Here's some industrial area right there. What is that? 5.51 miles. Okay. So there will be people all around here. So let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go down here to the launch company. Boca Chica is actually back here. So we're going to, uh, we're going to zoom in here a little bit. And look, so the housing area of Boca Chica is right about here is where they started. Now, yeah, it's so SpaceX bought them all out. No, they didn't. There, there's still residents in Boca Chica that would not sell out. I did a video where I urged them all to sell. I said, hey, you don't want to be if this thing goes boom. You want to get out. I actually encouraged people that were in Boca Chica to sell, to go. So uh, the launch complex is right about, that's probably it right there. It's right, if we zoom in close, we'll see it exactly. So if we can start looking at where people are living at, that is 1.79 miles. It's not even two miles. See, when we're launching uh, Saturn and space shuttles, we, uh, we didn't want anything critical within where the people would be within three miles of the launch complex. This is definitely within that. And there will be people right in this entire facility here. I don't know. There might be some people over here. I hope not. But there definitely could be people over here because this is where uh, Starship, uh, basically, the oh, let me get it, just close that. This is the industrial area where they build most of the stuff. Some of you know, the final assemblies over here. We can zoom in and have a look, see at some of this stuff, guys. This is all SpaceX manufacturing. So that's a yard there. This is their facilities. Looks like they're uh, one of their high bays and high bays there for assembly. And they got this long road that runs out to the launch complex and their final Assemblies, you know, right there. That's the launch complex right there. Orbital launch pad. So I was pinging right on it a minute ago. That is the orbital launch pad. <clears throat> you can see they have a Starship here. They've got a super heavy booster here. That's the uh, orbital piece. That is the super heavy. The super heavy booster is a lot taller. I was out of 390 feet, 100. And uh, 64 feet is the actual upper stage that we refer to as Starship. So there you go, guys. That's the launch company. So the vehicle, this is uh, all probably aids in the assembly. That's your launch tower, per se. I guess that's Mechazena, the uh, grappling arms to grab it right here. Mechazena, I believe I got that close to being right. <laughs> so you can see the actual vehicle assembly building is back over at uh, Boca Chica, a lot closer than the ones for the space shuttle and 
uh, which is uh, which was much further from the pad. So you can see that you got they got to go down this road, transport the. So you know they got a lot of interesting transports on this road here, guys. So there's your, there's your houses, there's your buildings right here. People, there are people that live here, guys. A lot of solar arrays there. So this is no joke, people. This is no joke. There's your vehicle assembly building. And maybe another one going up here. So this is where they do the assembly of their vehicles there, guys. Yeah, originally, just had a big tent building. <laughs> well, they got pretty serious. They bought a lot of stuff there in a hurry. So uh, we'll, do, we'll stop this here. So essentially, what that says is that Fort Isabel, a town of 5,000 people, is within the area of risk. The whole town is in the area of risk should that thing blow up from the pad. If it's a little bit above the pad and blows up, that stuff could go further. But the uh, N1 explosion was considered the largest artificial non-nuclear explosion to have ever occurred, man-made. So this could be bigger if it were to blow up, if it were to blow up. Now, I hope it don't. I'm not trying to jinx it, but you, when you're, you're thinking safety, you have to think in these terms. So that's how you protect against things from happening. That's how you make people aware. So guys, if you are in Port Isabel, heads up, man, heads up. <laughs> you better be ready to take cover in a hurry. I mean, in a hurry, because uh, sound waves, you know, speed of sound, uh, 700 feet you know, per second, whatever it is, that's going to get to you in a hurry. That's going to be in, on you and really fast. So uh, you've got to pay attention. You've got to pay attention to this launch and be ready to duck and cover. And, uh, and don't even be in the buildings, because uh, if you're inside the building and glass shatters, you could be cut. So that's the safety news for people in Boca Chica, people at the Starbase uh, Manufacturing Facility of SpaceX, and for people at uh, Port Isabel. There is risk involved in being in any of these locations or for all the tourists watching. So let's hope that people are far enough away, and let's hope that this thing launches, and I hope that it's successful because our future may ride on. I really believe the Chinese space the moon, we're in deep kimchi, and I also believe that we have facing a lot of risk in the world today uh, I mentioned natural catastrophes. Guys, uh, there is a, a, a lot of indications that we had a comet strike the Indian Ocean 5,000 years ago and create a big crater and a, uh, tsunamis that swept around all the oceans in the world and raining and deluges, just like in the book of Genesis, in the days of Noah. There is evidence for a flood. Uh, what do they call it? Behringer Crater, I believe is the name of it. I have to go back and check uh, impact. But uh, guys, we're, we're talking about some serious stuff. We've had the Laurentide Ice Sheet was hit back in uh, the end of the Ice Age. It started the Younger Dryas period about 12,500 years ago or something like that. We had uh, a piece of that probably hit the Mediterranean and caused even the tsunami there, that comet that hit then. You know, these things break up like they're hitting Earth. We've got uh, volcanoes, super volcanoes that can end our civilization. There's a lot of stuff that could bring our civilization down. And if we and power, lots of the power grid, it could be from war, could be AI. Uh, we have a major risk of World War III on us right now. I don't know if we can get to the moon and Mars fast enough, uh, given the risk we're facing as a civilization today. We need to make this happen. It needs to happen. It needs to happen fast. But they got to get that place developed to such a way it can be self sustaining, which means the first rocket or two isn't going to get there because you know, the first few missions. You know, the people won't be able to survive until they get uh, a self-sustaining infrastructure built up on Mars or the moon, all these other places. Really interesting. I like the old Neolian concept of the spinning space colonies because they're built and designed to be mostly self-sufficient, although they probably don't have uh, a Taiwan <laughs> a semiconductor manufacturing company. <laughs> See, the total self-sufficiency in modern society requires a lot of things, does it not? So... <clears throat> we got a long way to go here, guys, but things need to happen. They need to happen fast. So I'm really rooting for this launch to be successful. I'm really pulling for that to happen. But there are risks. What are the risks uh, if besides uh, the risk of the facilities themselves? Guys, the FAA really clamped down on the space show. They really clamped down, clamped down on SpaceX for this launch. They had to go through a lot of hoops for approval this time, uh, a lot more than regular. If this is not successful and does major damage to anything on the coast, that's a uh, wildlife sanctuary. The environmentalists were the hardest ones on SpaceX. And that really drove the FAA launch uh, decision matrix quite hard. 
So major damage in the coastal areas, even if it's just wildlife, could very ad adversely affect SpaceX's ability to launch from this facility again. They may never be able to. In fact, if it's bad enough, they might even let them launch from the Cape. NASA, I did a, a video where somehow NASA really didn't want them launching spaceship uh, from uh, Kennedy Space Center. That may change. If this thing works up, they may give that up. Now, SpaceX does have two mobile oil platforms that they could develop for launch complexes. That would be perhaps their way out. Let's hope that if they have a major catastrophe that they can use those if they need to. I hope even more so that they don't need to. But whatever the case, they want to launch these things and launch a whole lot of them and have a very high flight rate. Well, the more you fly, the more likely you are to have an accident. So anybody in Port Isabel needs to be aware. Anybody in Boca Chica needs or Star, uh, star, base, starship, uh, star base needs to be super aware of the risk that's involved just to take care of yourself. Do I think we should stop because of the risk? No. No, I think this mission is critical. I think it needs to happen. I think that we've got to make this launch happen. And let's hope that, uh, let's hope that this program is successful and that SpaceX Starship program delivers most of what, at least most of what uh, Elon Musk hopes it will do. Let's hope it delivers all of it. There's a lot of untried technologists. Uh, uh, Elon believes in trying multiple new things at once which means the risk is higher, but it's a cheaper way to develop stuff. He's been willing to take risk and blow things up. That's how you learn stuff, uh, which NASA has been very adverse to because uh, NASA is public funded and the, the public and the accounting mechanisms and public support is very fickle about stuff like that. But for the most part, yes, yeah, SpaceX does get a ton of its funding from the government. No doubt, no doubt. So, but uh, they get it through a different mechanism and Elon does have his own deep pockets to reach into. And Elon is committed to making this happen. So let's hope that whatever the case is, it's not a Hindenburg moment. And if it is a Hindenburg moment, that SpaceX has uh, enough wherewithal through the deep pockets of Elon to continue. Our future is dependent on this, guys. Our future is very dependent on this. Our future, we've got to have a moon base if we don't want China to rule the world. We need to be in space as a civilization if we are to survive. And we need to be there with self-sustaining in-space infrastructure before something happens to wipe us out down here. Let's hope that don't happen. Let's hope our space uh, abilities does things like helps prevent asteroid or common impacts on Earth in the future. That could be the benefit of this, this space development. You know, if the dinosaurs had had SpaceX, they might still be here today, right? <laughs> Let's hope. There's other, you know, containers coming up like Blue Origin, but Blue Origin is not coming up as fast as SpaceX. I don't think we have enough time for Blue Origin to save us from the Chinese because that's coming fast, guys. That is happening and coming at us real fast. 2030 is going to be here before we know it. So we need to have American presence on the moon before 2030 in a big way. And I'm not sure we're prepared for that. Uh, so we need to wake up and put an accelerator on this and make it happen, whether Starship blows up or not. But there's a lot of risk in this. And I just want to point that out. It's not a cakewalk. Space is hard. The space tourism industry, you know, got launched in 2003 with the winning of the SpaceX, uh, excuse me, with uh, the <laughs> X Prize, right? Except they didn't start the tourism industry. Here we are 20 years later and it's still faltering. So, and why is that? Because space is hard. I remember being at conferences immediately after, uh, after that win and a lot of people going, yeah, look, space tourism would be going in a year. And I said, no, it won't. I said, and uh, people got mad at me. I mean, furious. A lot of people that were just yelling in my face. I said, it's too tough. It ain't gonna happen in a year. Oh my God, I had people about ready to claw my eyeballs out. Here we are 20 years later. Where are we at? It's tough. SpaceX, what they have done has been miraculous. I know a little bit about space. I know a little bit about even the, uh, the Burt Rutan's winning of the X Prize because I had guys working on that system guys using the derivatives of this motor. This engine was the daddy of the prize winning X prize contest. This is my heart catch prize rocket engine. And we launched a mission with this engine guys. And I actually bid to pour the motors for that. And Bert Rutan and I did not come to an agreement. You've seen that my friend Tim Pickens was very much involved in uh, in-house at Scale Composites. 
him and Steve Mustakis, Al Wright, and the late, great Glenn May, who passed away during the coal flow test for the engine for uh, Spaceship Two. So, uh, guys, it's risky. It's, there's a lot of risk involved. And I've lost friends in this endeavor for new space. I've had my skin in the game. That's why how I went, won this prize right here, the Space Pioneer Award from the National Space Society in 1997. Look it up. It's from Wikipedia. That's how we won this thing. I won that prize right there for my launch of our Halo SL-1 rocket from a balloon to outer to uh, to the edge of space, guys. So been there, done that. I've been a piece of it. I've also been a piece of this thing. Interesting rocket, but it's not going to help us settle space or really and truly develop a moon base for Mars. If you can land us, get a few missions there. We could put boots on the ground. We could use some other lander that could be launched on that because that's more powerful than the Saturn V but it's still not going to accomplish our goals and means uh, and, and the kind of price that the world is willing to pay for, not the United States in this day and age. The Starship might do it. So let's cross our fingers and wish them the best, the very best. But it could be bad. And if it is, then there's going to need to be people to stand up behind them and try to keep this thing together, to keep the government and other people from coming unglued to enable this to go forward. If it don't, we're washed up, guys. This has got to go. It's got to work. If it don't work, we've got to have contingencies and make it work. You know, they may have to fly a dozen starships to get it right. It's possible. It's a complex vehicle. And it's worth it. I hope Blue Origin comes up to speed really fast. <laughs> yeah, Blue Origin is going to be testing on the old Saturn V test stand out to Mars Space Flight Center. I've shown you all that in other videos too, guys. So all right, enough said. Cross your fingers. Everybody be awake in the morning. I will come back and talk about the results of the mission. I may even go live during the mission, but I don't think I can carry the video live because it'll be copywritten from SpaceX. So um, nothing else. I'll come on after, sometime after the mission with some kind of analysis of the, of the launch and flight. <laughs> so with that said, thank you for watching. Cross your fingers and Greg out.